right, thank you all for coming. Head Coach Sean Lewis, we'll start us off with an opening statement. Uh, you know, great to be back home. Uh, it was great to watch the tape with the guys and, and own it Sunday. Again, want to thank the friends, fans, family members who stayed through the long day uh, down in Oxford, Mississippi with us through the weather delays and everything. It was great that when our kids, after the way that they were done competing and fighting to, to jog off the tunnel there and to have some, some Kent State blue and gold still in the stands was awesome to see. Um, excited for this next week. Excited to get into conference play. A uh, little early wardrobe preview. We're going to have a little catch-up mustard maction this week. We'll be wearing gold. The Cardinals will be wearing red, so we'll settle the endless debate if mustard or ketchup is better. So we're excited about that. Just looking back on that weekend, obviously, just kind of what are your thoughts now that it's over? Well, again, really, really pleased with the way our kids handled it, you know, and, and we talked about it during while everything was going on from the, the plane getting delayed on, on Friday and, and us coming together as a family and spending different times in two different hangars and the way the kids adjusted and, and having a film session, you know, in a hangar in between two Lear jets is, uh, is a memory that those kids will, will never forget and was really, really pleased with the way that they kept their composure, the way that they handled themselves like pros, truly. And at no point in time was anyone complaining. They, they were like water. They just went with the flow. We got into town. We ate dinner. We put our heads down. We rose early. You know, we got to the stadium. We, we handled our business and came out and competed and fought. Again, it wasn't a crutch. It wasn't an excuse. And, and it's a great life lesson that we talked about yesterday with the kids that things are going to happen and adversity is going to strike. But when, when the opportunity to do something that you love and, and to go out and compete and play or to, to take care of your job, you need to make sure that you do that. And, and, and again, I thought our kids did a great job with that. And, and it's in the past. It, it, it's done. It's over with. And, and like I tweeted out, we are better as a family because of that experience. The time together is, is invaluable. And for us going through our first season, our first year together, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have changed a thing. As crazy as that sounds, I wouldn't have changed the things. And I'm glad that it happened. Last one about it. What exactly happened with the first plane? <laughs> our, our pilot cut the corner a little bit too tight, and the right rear wheel ended up in the grass, and that delayed us. Okay. Yes. So very slow. No, I mean, I was asleep, didn't even realize what happened. And because I get out of play and I fall asleep. That's what I do. And um, I got nudged by, by Adam Young, who's our director of football operations, who's the best in the biz. And I mean, he's the real MVP from this weekend with everything that happened to, to keep everything logistically in place. We had, we had run off the runway. At no point in time was anyone in any danger whatsoever. We, we deplaned, we got a new plane, we enjoyed some pizza, we had a film session, we relaxed, you know, we, we played some road travel games. You know, a couple of our coaches played this trivia game that Jacob might have gotten involved with and involving sports figures and, and act, actors and names, and that went on for about as long as the delay did. And so, again, it's little things like that that, you know, people don't really know goes on during a, a travel trip where you grow together as a family and you come together and you get to learn more and more about one another because you ain't going anywhere. When you're sitting, you know, I think it was five and a half, six hours in a hangar, you know, together, you're going to learn some things about one another, and, and it was really cool. It was a great experience. Again, we continue to fight. We're resilient. The, the kids have, have done a good job handling the plans, the week-to-week -week installation of, of scheme and knowledge and understanding why we're doing the certain things that we're doing. Was really pleased with the defensive efforts, you know, with the amount of weapons that Old Miss has and, and the, the level of talent that, that they've accumulated on that side of the ball and what they do schematically. They Again, like we talked about last week, they stress you out in a lot of different ways. Uh, and the defense did a, a, did a fabulous job. I was really, really pleased with the special teams. You know, it was an area that we've been talking about as an area of of weakness the past few weeks, and those guys really took ownership of their roles, of their jobs. Some guys really stepped up in a big time way. Uh, Johnny Woods had a tremendous impact um, on the teams. Um, AJ Mussolini had a, had a big impact on teams as well. Was really pleased with that. Trickett continues to impress each and every single time out. I know he he missed a long one that was 48, and I think he just overswung on it. But I mean, he's got more than enough leg, and know that he'll put that thing right through the pipes as we go forward. So really pleased with that. And again, offensively, you know, we show flashes that when we're right, we are right, and we can compete. And we can play with anyone, anytime, anywhere. And when we're wrong, you know, again, it's just it's it's little things. It's just having a little bit more discipline, a little bit more more focus, a little bit more attention to detail to make sure that our fundamentals are right. And that goes for the coaching staff as well, to where we can put them in better positions to succeed. So that's not all on the kids. And again, that goes back to the way that we prepare. You know, we had arguably our best offensive practice on Tuesday last week, and that shows up in moments. And then again, there's times in the week of preparation to where we're not exactly locked in, and that shows up as well. 
well. So we talk all the time that our practice repetition becomes game reality. And for us to build confidence on game day and for us to, to take the field with a certain level of confidence because we're a really good football team, we need to practice and, and, and play on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday the way that we are going to play on Saturday. Um, you look at the defense and the passing numbers, obviously, jump out at you. Yep. From watching the game, going like they were running free. I mean, no, no. I mean, that, that's a talented group there. Now, I mean, I, I'll be hard pressed to, to see, you know, a, a, a better offense with more explosive weapons in the country than, than that cast of characters. Now, I mean, those the, that group of wide receivers was a good looking group, and and, and I think they're going to be playing on Sundays for many years to come. You know, they, they and again, because of their scheme of what they do, they stress you out in a lot of different ways. But again, our kids competed and, and our guys, even though there were some big plays that were made, obviously, but I mean, there, there were some spectacular individual effort plays made by their kids. And there's some spectacular individual effort plays made by our kids as well that don't show up, you know, to where we're getting PBUs on third downs and getting off the field. Jamal is all over the place, you know, getting one pick, has his hands on another one, let our team in tackle. So he's showing up in the run fit as well. Uh, I mean, those guys competed their tails off, and they did a great job. And if you look at, again, the, the, the bottom line and the numbers, right, they say one thing. But when you turn on the tape and we grade our kids on all the different factors of alignment, assignment, attitude, effort, technique, fundamentals, our guys played, played well. And obviously, there's no moral victories in that. But again, it gives us confidence going into the next week that we can line up and go toe-to-toe with, with those calibers of players that, again, we can line up and go toe-to-toe with anyone, and we'll be just fine in any arena. Schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel about this team? You know, now compared to when maybe you started this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, the, the only thing that's changed is that you know you kind of know now because you've been through the battles, you've been through the fight. You can look in guys' eyes and you know, you know, the, the credibility that they've earned on both sides of it, right? You go into it, and we talked a little bit about this after the kind of the Illinois game of, of you know the way in which we were going to call it and, and how the way that we approach all these opportunities is that we're going to go and we're going to compete and we're going to win. And I don't know if those kids had heard that before or not, but there, there needs to be action to validate those words. And I think through these four weeks, the kids know that we mean what we say and we say what we mean. And, and there's a, a sense of confidence that comes with that for them. And now having felt that through a month together as a family for the first time, you know, the, the kids know that we're not going to waver as a staff, that we're not going to waver in our beliefs as a family. And we know that our kids aren't going to waver in that belief either. And, and I'm really proud, again, with the way that they've continued to prepare, the way that they've continued to, you know, bounce back from adverse situations and, and have kept really a, a, a ton of focus. And, and regardless of what's being said outside of our, our walls and our facilities, I think our kids have done a great job each and every single time that they come to the facilities they're focused, they're locked in, they're preparing, they're getting better. And each and every single week, I feel like we have put the best product on the field and we've consistently improved, which is what you want to do ultimately to have sustained and continued growth so we can lay a solid foundation for this Flash Fast family. Both teams are in a similar spot. Uh, one and three overall, Penn State, Ball State. Uh, I haven't played a conference game yet. Uh, how do you? Or, uh, what have you seen for Ball State on their film so far? Yeah, I mean, the, the first thing that stands out is their quarterback's played a lot of football. You know, so he, he's used to being in the fray, and he's, he handles himself really, really well in those situations. They have some dynamic skill offensively. They do a really good job offensively maximizing their personnel and putting them in the best position to succeed. Um, they're defensively a multiple front team. They, they base out of a three down. But again, they'll, they'll slant and move the front and, and show you one thing pre-snap, do another thing post-snap. So again, that, that puts a little bit of stress on you and they do the same thing in the back end so you know coach new and his staff do a really good job of kind of keeping you on your toes that they present one thing and like a good magician when the ball snapped and the act starts it's something completely different so we have to do a great job in our preparation you know understanding what those different pictures are and as always knowing that our pre-snap read might not exactly be our post-snap reality and knowing where we need to go with the football and then you can tell that they do a really good job on special teams and it's something that they hang their hat on it's something that they're prideful in and, and that they invest time in so it's going to be a good matchup in all three phases across the board. It's kind of interesting. Obviously, neither one of the teams has gotten much respect um, before this season started. Mm-hmm. They kind of play each other right away, and it's an intriguing matchup in that regard. Yeah. Both teams really have a lot to prove. Yeah, I, I think every time that you go out, you got something to prove, right? And every time that you go out, and it's something we talk to our kids about all the time, is that you're going to put something down on tape that everyone else in the conference is going to see, you know. And, and as you go through, especially in these conference opponent games, you know, th- there's kids 
on Ball State that are redshirt, you know, freshmen or freshmen or young kids, sophomores that that we're going to continue to see, you know, down the years. And, and you know, so what are you putting on tape? And and, and what are your opponents going to think about you? Are they going to respect you at the end of the day because of the way in which you play this game? Not because of what you say, but because of what you show. And when you turn the tape on, if you want to know if you're a good player. Just let the tape roll and let the tape do the talking. And that's something that, again, through our preparation will give us confidence to go play so that we can put a, a great product on the field that the kids can be proud of, our university can be proud of, and our fans can be proud of so that when we get back home here for homecoming, the stands are packed and Dick Stadium's rocking and we can go battle the next opponent. You've been really good on fourth down this year, seven for 10. Uh, so far this year, what has led to that being so good on fourth down offensively? The kids having confidence in the calls and the kids executing the calls. I mean, I've said it numerous, numerous times that Saturdays and game days are about the kids, and the kids do an excellent job of focusing in those critical situations and to be executing at, at a 70% clip. Again, it's a testament to the kids that they're, they have a heightened sense of awareness in those situations that if we can continue to sustain that heightened sense of awareness and that focus and that attention to detail on first and second down, we might not have to go for it for as many fourth downs. But again, we're going to call it to win it. And, and those kids know that and they have confidence with it. So I love it that when we're in kind of that, that gray area of, of what's coach going to do, those guys are slow to come off the field because they want that opportunity and they have confidence that they can be successful in that area. And that's exactly how we want them to be. We're good, you know, and again, that's a testament to the way the kids have trained through the first four phases since we've gotten here. It's a testament to Coach Sobel and his staff and talking to some of the people who have been around, as you guys have known in the past, at this point in time, a year ago, that was not the case injury-wise. And again, knock on wood, you know, we're, we, are, we are healthy. And aside from the normal kind of wear and tear of a season, our guys have been able to progress and, and we'll rehab and, and get prehab today like crazy and use our cryotherapy chamber. I mean, that thing's rolling 24 hours a day to keep our guys right. And it's a great luxury that we have because of the commitment of our administration to give our kids the tools that they need to be successful throughout the course of the year. Um, and, and our guys, again, because of the emphasis that we've put on rest, recovery, hydration, we, we've been very, very fortunate because of the way that they've trained and the way that they play, right? We've been able to stave off some of those really, really uh, career ending or season ending injuries because guys are playing hard in a bent knee position. And when you play that way, you're gonna be all right. You might get rolled up. We've had guys that have gotten rolled up, you know, but it's a, it's a, it's a strain, it's a sprain. It's not anything that's torn because guys are playing through the echo of the whistle, which is something that we preach all the time. Still day to day, still day to day. Yep. And then uh, Jim came back, played. Jones. Yep. He got dinged up a little bit though. But just an ankle. Yeah. I mean, just kind of, just an ankle. Right. Okay. Um, back to non-conference real quick, and, and Woods in particular. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, this thing that you're doing doesn't doesn't function the way it can without a quarterback that's really at a high level, and he really has proven that he can he can direct this. Thing. Yeah, he, he is doing some good things. He's doing some good things, and again, he. He is a, in a microcosm really how we are at a macro level as an offense, that when he's right and, and he knows where his eyes need to be because he, he's, he's locked in and his fundamentals are right, he's right and he's executing at a high clip. You know, there's still times where fundamentally there's some things are breaking down where his footwork's not exactly right and, and you know, where he can consistently improve with that. But really pleased with his, uh, his impatience to get better. You know, and, and I think a lot of times that, you know, people make a big deal about millennials wanting instant gratification. Well, in this point in case, I'm glad that he's wired the way that he is because he wants to be successful right now and he's hungry and he's working at it. He's not making excuses for why it's not happening. He comes in each and every single day, you know, and, and, and wants to know and wants to be coached. And that's a great trait of a great player that where am I deficient? How can I be better? How can I improve and do my 111th and do my job so that the people around me can be better, you know? And he's really grown in that regard, and it's been really positive in the, the, the evidence that he's put down on the field and the credibility that he's gained in the locker room because, again, he was an unknown commodity to a lot of the guys in the locker room as well. Through these four weeks, I think that's really helped him establish himself as a leader, and because he's one of our hardest working kids, he's able to then be vocal and be a leader in the locker room as well. So pleased with his growth, his maturity. There's still some mistakes, you know, that he knows that we've discussed that, you know, that that a first year starting quarterback are going to make that do not make me happy. And he knows that. And, and we'll continue to grow through all that as we go. You mentioned how the, the team handled the game itself. 
What was their feeling like right after the game and then kind of on into that 24 hour period? Yeah, again, it's that it's that feeling of a missed opportunity, right? To where they are, they're not satisfied, they're they're hungry, and, and again, but it, it's not it's not that they're down or they're low in any sense whatsoever. They have a self confidence about them that again they know that when we're at our best we can play, and that there was there was something there that was available for the taking, and, and we let it slip through our slip, slip through our fingers. So now it's just a matter of going out and again having the level of focus and intensity uh, so that we can sustain and finish and and go out and earn those victories because again like we talk about all the time anything of value in life isn't just going to be given to you and those wins against power five opponents or any win for that matter is not going to be handed to you you got to go take it is there any added excitement with the beginning of conference play this week and does it change your approach at all no, it really doesn't. And again, I think that goes to the what we've talked about all the time and, and the culture that we're creating is that, again, this is the this is a big opportunity. There's a level of excitement because it's the next opportunity. So the guys came in yesterday and they approached Owen It Sunday the right way. Um, guys have been rehabbing like crazy today. And, and then we'll get after it tomorrow with Tough Tuesday. And that's the, the most important thing that, that matters because it's the next thing and we have to dominate that. Thank you. Good. Awesome. Thank you, guys.